Hi everybody, welcome back to Theology, where we drink tea and talk theology. Today we are continuing with our Advent series, and so we're drinking the Christmas blend, which is a ginger, cinnamony, nutmeggy, black tea, uh, the Christmas breakfast blend. And this week, so last week we talked about hope, and dived into that and this week we are talking about faith. Now from tradition to tradition what faith, uh, what the candles represent is different. Some talk about this candle being love, some talk about it being the Bethlehem candle and others talk about it being faith. So that is what we're focusing on. We are going to focus on faith today. I feel like this follows on really well from our conversation on hope. Um, yeah, from our conversation on hope last week and what our hope was being placed in. We will start with a definition of faith, of what faith is. And faith is defined in Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. It's from the ESV version. Faith seems to be that confidence, that assurance that we have, that we will receive the good things that we hope for. It's what gives us the foundation or the ground for hoping for these things. Our faith is the foundation on which our hope is placed and built from. Faith has marked the people of God since the beginning, which uh, in this rest of the Hebrews 11 chapter and through a bit of Hebrews 12 as well, I believe, is what's unpacked, how people have been faithful all throughout the Old Testament, right from Abraham through and Abel to David and so on and so forth. Faith has marched the people of God since the beginning. The thing that the object of our hope is, is the object of our faith. So when we're reevaluating what our hope is in, we are also reevaluating what our faith is in. How can we have faith? This is a hugely discussed topic throughout theology and in the Bible itself, having faith. I've currently been working my way through very slowly, very slowly, The Cost of Discipleship by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And it's an incredibly challenging book and I recommend having a look into it yourself. One of the themes he really does unpack though is also a theme that's present through many, many books of the Bible, uh, especially James and Hebrews, is about faith and active faith. Our faith is meant to call us into obedience to God. One of his big things is that faith and obedience can't be separated from each other. Faith is shown by obedience and obedience shows what you're faithful to. Faith is meant to call us into obedience to God and his commands. It's meant to call us to live differently, to be different, to look different to the world. If we have faith but are still living in the world, finding our hope out there and not calling into the question the way we, that we, as in yourself, live in balance with what is of God, then we really need to seriously consider what type of faith we have. When we, uh, who we listen to and what we listen to really impacts the type of faith that we are shown to have. Is our faith alive or are we letting our faith die? Are we going out into the world from a place of reliance on God or his goodness in the trust of his protection over us from, you know, or not always his protection, bad things can still happen, but you know that his reliance and his strength and not our own. Are we standing upon the foundation of God or are we standing on the foundation of the things in the world and the things we have chosen to trust instead of trust in God? Faith leads us to change our behaviours and actions. Faith is an active thing. If we have faith but nothing in our life changes, then our faith uh, is as good as dead. This is one of the things that faith is talked about quite a bit in Romans and Hebrews and, and James. I meant to say James. It's also talked about a lot in Hebrews. 
but faith is talked about a lot in Romans and James. And one of the things that people often say is that these two texts are in quite significant conflict with each other. The Romans is saying that we are justified by God, that we uh, just have to trust in him and believe in him and then we all live. Where James is saying that faith needs to be shown by our actions, that our, what we say and what we do is what shows our faith. And people say that it's about uh and people say it's about works, basically. And I really strongly disagree with this. I think that what we're doing there is dichotomizing instead of holding things in tension. We can never fully understand God. You know, that's, it's just not possible for us. And so there are these things that we think of as dichotomies that really we have to hold in tension because they do work to, together and stop us going too far one way or the other. Basically, and this is how I think of it, to hold it in tension, is that if I am truly living in a faith in Christ, and I am truly living like that, or if I truly have that, if I actually believe that, then that will change how I act because Jesus is transformative. So if I am fully letting him into my life, then that will change how I live my life because I am not letting myself be ruled by my own desires, but instead ceding myself to his superiority, to him who knows better than I do, right? So they're not in conflict. This idea of, uh, saved by grace and saved by works and not in conflict. The grace we have been given calls us into work for God. If we don't expect God's grace for, to change our lives and to continually change our lives as we grow and develop, then we aren't really expecting for God's grace, are we? Because God's grace is transformative. And so if you're not gonna let something change your life, then you're not gonna let it transform you. And this is this is the tension that we need to hold with James. Yeah, it's okay to screw up. It's not all about the works. Well, it would be nice if we didn't screw up, but that does, that's, doesn't always happen. Things don't always go that way. But it's how do we deal with when we screw up that changes? Do we turn away from God? Do we turn closer to it? Do we acknowledge that we've screwed up? If we've screwed up in a way that's really hurt people and hurt other people, do we go and seek forgiveness? You know, do we remove ourselves from situations where we might hurt people like that again while we work it out? While we seek help as well to get it worked out, you know? Do we live in a way where faith is letting us tra our lives be transformed, but also that it flows out and helps transform other people's lives? And that's an act of faith. It's not about deeds and works and it's not about doing nothing. It's not about only having faith. It, those things are intrinsically linked. Faith and obedience are linked. Faith leads us to change. Faith is transformative. The life and works of Jesus call us to live in a way that is God honoring. It calls us into deeper and deeper relationship. But it isn't all inward, I'm working on myself. This is about me and my personal relationship with Jesus. This flows out into our lives. It changes how we interact with other people. It changes what we see. It changes how we focus on things. Because if that is my foundation, then that is what I'm always walking on. That is what everything I do comes out of this place of God. Everything I do flows from the Father, you know? Faith cannot simply be about belief. It is about more than that. If we believe Jesus is Christ and Lord, if we believe that God exists, if we believe that he died and rose again to save us, so if we, you know, if we believe in Jesus Christ, if we believe that God exists, then we believe the same amount as the demons. The acknowledgement that something is real, that you believe it, calls for no change in behavior. You can believe something and not change anything. 
but that isn't faith. Faith is an active changing to be obedient to God and his call for the world, to finding how we fit into his story, right? The Bible is his story and we, and he wants us to be a part of that. The whole world and his creation, it all centers around him, really. It's his story and he wants us to join him in his story. It's about growth and relationship with God and further reliance on him. That's what faith is. Faith is our foundation on which our life is built. It is where we go out from, where we return to, and the ground that we walk upon every day as we navigate through life. What we put our faith in is what we expect to keep us up in life, what we expect to keep us afloat. It's where we build our house. We, you know, we don't want to build our house on the sand. We want to build our house on the rock, on the solid foundation. This means our faith permeates into every area of our life. Every time we act in faith, God sees it. And he sees when we are acting in our faith in him. We are, we are to continue to turn to him, to rely on him instead of our own strength, things of our own making and things of the world. We are meant to turn to him instead of that. Where we put our faith is where we put our hope and where we put our trust. Who do we trust? That's a big question. Who do we trust? Who are we letting speak into our lives? And that's what you're putting your faith into. And is it goodness or is it fear? Are we, are we trusting in fear mongering? Anyway, it's a complete aside. Everything we have faith in, hope in and trust in should flow out from our faith in God. We need to really push into God and ask him constantly to continue to grow our faith in him, to show us and guide us away from putting our faith in not him. Too often we put our faith and hope and trust in what people say on the internet really, whether that be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, various news outlets, TikTok, whatever. This is what it becomes based on. Now, I do see the irony in this, as I am talking to you through YouTube, I am talking to you through the internet, but I don't want you to just trust what I'm saying. I want you to go away and take it to God. This isn't to be taken to fa at face value. I don't expect you to believe me. I want you to start thinking, you know? I, I don't expect you, that was my phone, um, to believe me. So. And so many of those things expect us to read the headline or see the short video and go, this is the whole truth. I don't expect you to believe that what I'm saying is the whole truth. There is so much more here that I'm not able to unpack about faith. Go away and think and pray about it and go into your Bibles and the commentaries. Research it yourself. Use this as a springboard. Anyway, so much of the world calls us to put our faith in things other than God to build our lives on other things, whether that causes, whether that be causes and activism, political groups, opinions on currently controversial topics. This is where we are told by the world to draw up our battle, battlegrounds and stand upon those. But without God, those things are weak. Yes, God might share that same desire, whether it be ending to human trafficking or looking after the planet, but our desire for all of those things should flow first from God, should flow from our foundation of Him. Those are not our foundation. Those are things we can take our foundation to. Faith is our foundation. If everything we do, we are meant to take God to, then we are meant to carry Him with us. How we walk through the world is meant to be with God. Our faith is meant to be living, so it should be shown by our heart and by our deeds. Faith and obedience are not two separate things. What we are obedient to is what we're showing faith to, and what we have faith in is what we show obedience to. And faith starts in the heart, but shows itself by our deeds, by our actions. When we lack faith, that shows in our actions as well as in our heart. God judges us by our, God sees our heart, but your heart is, flows into your actions. If you say you love everybody and you love other people, but you don't act like you love other people, then what's going on inside? You're living in conflict with yourself. And that's also not a good place to live. 
Faith requires us to live life as every promise of God is true, whether we feel like we see that or not, and to hold on to those we do see. Faith isn't about seeing, but it isn't about blindness. It is about knowing that we can never see at all, but we can see enough to know that the only being, the only thing worthy of our faith, um, and that will be a good keeper of our faith, is God. Just as Advent is a time for us to evaluate where our hope is, it is also a time to evaluate where our faith is. Fortunately, we can do those two things together. And it's also a time where we can make our faith alive again, or alive for the first time, or more alive than it currently is. It's asking, how can I, in this busy time, let God take control? How does God want me to bless those around me? It's a time for giving, so we give out of our faith. Faith is a huge topic and there are so many more things that I haven't covered. I really encourage you to continue to meditate on faith this week. And I hope you will join me. I would also love to hear your thoughts on the areas that I haven't, haven't covered about faith. I hope you'll join me next week as we talk about joy. Bye.